You know, Mike, I, uh, I do have my own Twitter handle now, which big upgrade from last year. And I also lost a contact about five minutes ago. So when I'm winking throughout this presentation, it has nothing to do with the information that I'm actually presenting. Um, so let's get started. Um, once again, as Mike said, my name is Nate Stevens. I'm a broker at CBRE, the Bolus Company. Uh, thank you to Marita for this opportunity to once again present to you today the Southern Maine office market forecast. Uh, before getting into too much forecasting, we're going to take a quick look back at 2015, some of the vacancy rates, trends, and large transactions really shaping the market moving into 2016. So a lot of the information that I'm going to present to you today is uh, data gathered at CBRE, the Bolus Company, as part of our annual market outlook. Um, this market outlook actually just was just released yesterday, uh, and we have hard copies downstairs in our booth, so make sure you pick up a copy before you, you head out. It's a great publication. Um, so in this market outlook, we survey 337 Class A and Class B buildings in the greater Portland market. Total market size is just under 12 million square feet. And we break this market into seven different submarkets, as you can see here. And moving through the presentation, we'll take a look at those submarkets, but also compare downtown Portland versus the suburban markets and Class A versus Class B. And also, I should note that due to the relatively small size of some of these submarkets, one large transaction, one large vacancy can really sway the numbers one way or the other. So I'll be sure to point that out as we move through. <clears throat> so let's get right into it. So the 2015 direct vacancy rate in Greater Portland fell for the fifth straight year last year to 6.52%. This is down from 7.64% in 2014, lowest vacancy rate since 2008, and actually roughly about half of the, the height of the vacancy rate, which was just over 12% in 2010. We're not quite back to the pre-recession levels in 2006, 2007, which were right around 45 to 5% um, vacancy. However, it was a very busy year last year, a very active market, like a lot of the other presenters are saying today. Um, in 2015, there was 140,000 square feet in positive net absorption. Net absorption is the amount of space that was actually leased or absorbed in the market over the previous 12 months. Um, to really put this in perspective, in 2014 at last year's presentation, um, I mentioned there was 50,000 square feet in positive net absorption. So there was three times as much space leased in the marketplace this past year, uh, really creating a very active market. And on that same note, the transaction volume increases again year after year for the sixth straight year. And while we can't really look at this too much and compare it directly to the vacancy rates and those trends, I think it's interesting to note that in 2015, there were twice as many deals done, twice as many leases signed as there were in 2009. So definitely a very busy, very active market. And with this, started to shift to a landlord's market. I alluded to this a little bit in last year's presentation in some certain submarkets, but really, I think overall, we saw landlords really in the driver's seat of a lot of these deals um, and really moving, not moving off of their asking rates as much, not offering as many rent incentives, such as free rent or tenant improvement allowances, though I think there still are some opportunities in certain submarkets, and I'll be sure to point that out. Um, and lease rates continue to climb. Crime. <laughs> crime. Climb. Really nothing I think to write home about. I mean, maybe 20 cents, 25 cents a square foot overall last year, and this has been a similar trend for the last three or four years. And so while landlords might be in the driver's seat, I don't think, I think they're just a little weary to start jacking up the rents just yet. Um, I think as Justin mentioned earlier this morning, they have long memories. Um, and so I think they're more likely to move off those, those rent incentives, as I mentioned earlier. And then really one of the storylines last year was just the limited number of large contiguous office spaces available in the marketplace, especially over 10,000 square feet. This is both downtown and in the suburbs, but especially in the Class A markets. Not a lot of options for tenants to choose from uh, in the marketplace. And so I wanted to compare Portland to some other um, New England metropolitan areas, and this is Portland versus Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, downtown vacancy rates for the last two years on your left, suburban vacancies on your right. And really, Portland continues to operate at a relatively low vacancy rate compared to other areas in New England, actually nationally as well, uh, except for do uh, downtown Boston. Um, really very, very strong last couple years, very low vacancy rate, even considering the number of buildings that have gone up in that area over the last 12 to 24 months. But Portland as a whole is really kind of following this national trend this year, and that is this move into, movement to urban areas. And we can see that in the graph here where the downtown vacancy rate fell about 10% down to just 7.6%. Uh, and in the suburbs, really not much movement at all, 6.8% uh, down to 6.3%. And 
And so I want to look at the seven submarkets that I brought up earlier, and these are the last three year vacancy rates for each of those submarkets. And what's interesting to note is that only two out of the seven submarkets actually saw a drop in the vacancy rate last year. <clears throat> and that was in downtown Portland, as I just mentioned, but also a very significant drop in the main mall area. Um, main mall area from going from roughly 11% vacancy down to 4% vacancy. And I'll get into some of the deals that really shaped that dramatic drop. But really, <clears throat> looking at the other markets, um, you know, it's really important to note that the action was in downtown Portland and the main mall areas. Um, looking at suburban Portland, found with Cumberland Yarmouth, not a whole lot of movement last year. Uh, Westbrook, spike off the charts, 28%. Um, this is the example of really can't read into these numbers too much because this is really due to one significant vacancy um, that is roughly one-fourth of the entire Westbrook market. Um, so can't read into that too much, but I'll talk about that a little bit more moving forward. And Scarborough, South Portland, medical, really not much of a movement. A uh, little bit of an uptick, but not enough to offset the overall vacancy, because since the main mall area in downtown account for roughly 60% of the office space on the market. So looking this at a little bit of a different angle, comparing Class A and Class B vacancy rates, um, on the left-hand side, we have downtown vacancy rates for the last six years. Uh, dark green uh, bar representing Class A space, the light green bar representing Class B space and then the vacancy, suburban vacancy rates for the same on the right-hand side. And starting in downtown Portland, start with the light green bar uh, representing Class B. Not a whole lot of movement over the last 12 months and even over the last six years since 2010, only from about 14% down to about 10.5%. However, the dark green bar, Class A, um, dramatic drop last year, 8.8% vacancy in 2014, down to 4% vacancy this past year, and actually I think there might even been a couple deals at the end of the year that may have pushed this down below 4% before I wrote this presentation. And so when I talk about the action being in downtown Portland, that is primarily due to the Class A market. The Class B market did not help at all with that drop in the vacancy rate. And then moving into the suburbs, really no big difference between the Class A and the Class B in terms of uh, how those submarkets operate. So I wanted to get into the deals that shaped these trends. Um, these are the significant lease transactions in downtown Portland uh, over the last 12 months, over 10,000 square feet. In last year's presentation, wrapping up 2014, there were two deals over 10,000 square feet. In 2015, a total of eight. Um, bigger deals, more of them uh, this past year. And kind of a note to the previous slide with regards to the strength of the Class A market downtown, seven out of eight of these deals are in Class A buildings. And this is starting at One Monument Square. This has been a fairly large hole in the Class A market downtown for the past three or four years since Pierce Atwood vacated. But Bank of America leasing 25,000 square feet and Blue Tarp Financial also leasing 25,000 square feet, essentially filling this building. I think there was only about 13,000 square feet left. One Canal Plaza, Stone Coast Fund Services, expanding from across the street at 2 Portland Square. At 27 Pearl Street, Direct Vet Marketing leasing 10,000 square feet. And at 145 Commercial Street, People's United Bank leasing 12,500. And this is an example of a flight to quality that I spoke of in depth about last year with regards to tenants moving from Class B buildings into Class A buildings, willing to pay the extra rate to get into a nicer building and have a better presentation. And at 161 margin away, also last year, this was fully vacant from DHHS relocating out to the airport. This was a big hole uh, in last year's Class A vacancy. However, Main Eye Center leasing 25,000 square feet, and Portland Gastroenterology also leasing 25,000 square feet. Filling that building and also filling that big hole that we saw last year with that 8.8% vacancy. The fall really due to this building and one monument square. The lone Class B option last year over 10,000 square feet was at 66 Pearl Street. Publishers Clearinghouse Liquid leased 11,500 square feet. And even this deal was largely driven by the lack of Class A options in the marketplace. However, this tenant is going to be putting considerable funds into the space to really bring that Class A standard uh, within the building. And also, 66 Pearl Street is kind of at that higher end of the Class B market, uh, very presentable common areas. And so this could be a trend that we see moving into 2016 and 2017, where the Class B, the nicer Class B buildings will benefit from the tightness of the Class A market. Um, and I can think of a few of deals moving into the year now where that's the case, where Class A tenants are almost forced into a nicer Class B building, but landlords and tenants willing to put the extra money in to satisfy either that flight to quality or the need for presentable space. This is the list of significant lease renewals downtown. I won't go through these one by one. 
However, interesting to point out, talking with all the brokers that were involved in these three transactions, these were all driven by the lack of other options in the marketplace. And these were all very nice buildings and very nice spaces, so it's almost a lack of better options in the marketplace. And even speaking with one of these brokers who represented the tenant, they didn't even bother touring spaces. They didn't even go through a request for proposal process. They looked at the options on paper and said, well, I guess we're renewing. And then significant lease transactions in the suburban market. Um, really only three to speak of. However, they were significant in more than one way. At six Ashley Drive, Sun Life Assurance, leasing about 39,000 square feet. 300 Southboro Drive in South Portland, Maine Medical Partners, leasing 20,000. And at 123 Darling Avenue in South Portland, WAX expanding into 60,000. Now, the reason why these three deals are significant is that, first of all, they were all in the Maine Mall submarket. Uh, these three deals are really due to that dramatic drop that you saw last year. And the reason why is because they're all existing tenants expanding in the marketplace or new to the marketplace, which all resulted in a positive net absorption, which is why you saw that vacancy rate go from 11% down to 4%. And then moving into some of the significant lease renewals, we won't go through these one by one, but once again, four out of five of these are in the main mall area um, and all largely driven by lack of other options in the marketplace. Uh, really given, you know, Stantec for 40,000 square feet in the marketplace, not a lot of options for them to choose from, hence renewing at 42 Payne Road. And so I want to look at what we're looking at moving into 2016. This is a slide I actually took directly from my presentation last year, which was a list of the four significant vacancy rates moving into 2015. Two of them I already spoke about pretty much least, one Monument Square, 161 Marginal Way, the two Class A options on the list last year. However, the Class B options on the list, 415 Congress Street and 477 Congress Street are still there. And actually joined by 465 Congress Street, where People's United moved out of part of this space, 20,000 square, 26,000 square feet available there. So those are three buildings with over 20,000 square feet available, 477 with over 60,000 square feet available, all within a block of each other, all around the Monument Square area, where there's a very large spike of Class B vacancy in that area. The lone Class A option on the marketplace moving into 2016 is at 100 Middle Street, where Bank of America moved out of. Um, <clears throat> and even 14,000 square feet of this space has significant interest from a tenant right now, and so even that vacancy might not be around long. However, these other three options, last I've heard from everyone involved, nothing really cooking at this moment. So same moving into the suburbs. Uh, these were the four significant transactions moving into 2015. Three of them leased, as I mentioned earlier. The one significant vacancy last year, uh, which is actually listed as a sublease, was one Riverfront Plaza. And this is the culprit for that spike in the Westbrook um, vacancy rate last year, 135,000 square feet of Class A space. And moving into 2016, it's still there. However, there is very significant interest from a single tenant to lease the entirety of this building. And if this does move forward in the first quarter of this year, uh, Westbrook, I guess we could say, will have a banner year, <laughs> and 28% down to 2%. Um, and 222 St. John Street in Portland, uh, another significant vacancy. This is mostly small to medium-sized office spaces, uh, though I'm sure they'd love to do a large deal there. Uh, and then 75 John Roberts Road and 179 John Roberts Road, both Class A options near the main mall area, so you know, maybe those won't be around too long. And so really need to touch on the significant sales uh, in 2015. Um, you know, I thought there was a very strong year in 2014. However, right off the bat, one and two Portland Square selling for a record price of $66 million. Um, and this is significant, significant in fact that it has development opportunity in the parking lots behind the building. And I'll get on more on that a little bit later. But also the same month, 100 Middle Street closing for $35 million. Four to 600 Southboro Drive, $11 million. And then 22 and 48 Free Street uh, closing at the beginning of last year, purchased by J.B. Brown. And what's interesting about this is, once again, this also comes with some development opportunity on the parking lots along Spring Street. One Monument Way in Portland, downtown, uh, closing at 5.3. And then that building at 123 Darling Avenue, uh, closing at 5.12 million, really driven by that WEX lease that I mentioned earlier. So. I think moving into 2016, I think it's going to be extremely hard to top an investment office-related sales market like we saw last year. Uh, the deals are just getting more difficult to find, uh, and you know that possibility of, of interest rates increasing that everyone, everyone's talked about today, um, I just think it'll be tough to, uh, to top that, though I do think that there is significant interest 
moving into the new year, continued interest in investment properties, office-related downtown Portland especially, and even greater Portland as a whole. So I want to touch on some trends affecting the office market in greater Portland. Uh, last year I talked about kind of the rising um, square footage per employee, and this year really focusing on the Class B market downtown and this active repurposing space for another use that's in higher demand, such as residential, retail, hospitality. Um, I showed you that slide earlier in the presentation of the Class B office market downtown over the last six years, really only dropping from 14% down to 10.5% lagging the other sub-markets, and just having a really, really sluggish recovery, um, getting left in the dust. And so I think landlords and developers are looking at ways to redevelop these, these spaces and get some, some more interest and get them filled. And we can see that as an example uh, in the retail sector at 66 Pearl Street, Anthropology leasing about 6,600 square feet, which is the previous home of the Portland Chamber of Commerce. On a smaller scale at 123 Middle Street, Angela Adams, leasing 3,400 square feet that was previously office space or classified as office space in 2014. And then really the big one at 443 Congress Street, uh, the top three floors of that building, 18,000 square feet being turned into residential. Uh, this is 18,000 square feet taken directly off of the Class B vacancy last year. And in addition to that on a smaller scale, 111 Commercial Street, and going back to 443 Congress, this building is within that Monument Square area where all those other three buildings, and even more than that, uh, where there's that spike in vacancy. And so maybe some of those landlords might consider some repurposing as well. Um, and then on the hospitality side, at 119 Exchange Street, the former home of the Pre Portland Press Herald, that being converted, as many of you know, to the Press Hotel, 57,000 square feet. And while that one was a few years in the works, you look at all of these and you say, what would the Class B market be like if it wasn't this act of repurposing? Would the office vacancy rate for Class B last year have increased? I think it's very likely. And so moving into 2016, 2017, I think this is going to be a trend that we're going to see more of. I know three or four deals right now that are in the works that are going to be taking Class B office space, whether it's being turned into a restaurant or hospitality, that will be taken off the market and moved to a different use. And so I think that's something that's interesting to keep our, our eye on moving into this year and next year. And so really, what are we expecting for 2016? I don't think this is rocket science. I think it's going to be a very similar year to last year. I think there's going to be an overall continued drop in the vacancy rate. I think some submarkets are going to see more movement just because that's where the opportunities are. And especially for Class B buildings where the vacancy rates are a little higher. Um, speaking of you know, downtown Portland, the opportunities are still there for those Class B buildings. Um, the landlords are not in control of those buildings. Those are opportunities for tenants to get going. But in the Class A market, I think you know, we will continue to see that tighten. Um, and with that, I think we're going to see it to continue to be a landlord's market overall, but not necessarily in the Class B, as I just mentioned. And lease rates will continue to increase. I think it'll be like last year and the couple of years before, 20, 20 cents, 25 cents a square foot increase, minimal. Um, but Class A, downtown Portland, a very, very tight market, landlords in control. Last year that saw a dollar per square foot increase in asking rents, and I think I can see that moving forward into 2016. And so with that drop in the vacancy rate and with the lease rates finally getting to a point where they might sustain some significant new construction. And I put this on my slide last year and nothing happened, but I'm putting it on the slide this year because I really do think it's going to happen. Um, there, we've gotten to a vacancy rate of likely below 4%. I don't see any significant Class A vacancies on the immediate horizon coming up. Um, I think you're primed for new development downtown. And there are a couple projects that are um, in the works right now at 16 Middle Street next to the Portland Gateway Garage. There's about 30, 40,000 square feet of, of Class A space that's going to be constructed. And even on top of the Portland Gateway Garage, there are plans to add about 37 or 30,000 square feet of Class A office on a floor above it. However, I don't think those buildings are large enough to really have a big impact on the Class A market downtown. I think really we're going to need to see something that we saw last, it's been 10 years since there's been a significant tower built downtown. And so I think it needs to be 100,000 square feet, 75,000 square feet. And whether the lease rates can really support that, I guess, is the big question. Um, but moving into 2016, I think certainly we're going to start seeing these developments uh, in front of the planning board. And so that concludes today's presentation. Um, thank you to Jessica Estes and Michelle Peacock in my office for helping me put this together. Thank you.